Hello students, welcome back to my class. Uh, today, as you can see on screen, uh, I'm going to talk on tense. Now, as soon as we talk about tense, tense indicates an action, especially the time of action. When a particular action is done, or it's going to be done it depends on the kind of tense that we are going to use and tense is applicable in in all the languages because without tense there will be misunderstanding miscommunication so based on tense only a particular language can express exactly what the person wants to tell to others so that's why it's important to know that without tense communication is difficult so especially in a tense uh, the involvement of a verb is uh, interestingly divided in various kinds so we are going to talk about the different tenses so tense uh, is divided into present tense past tense and future tense that's uh, the broad division of tense now uh, every tense is again subdivided into the following you can see uh, you know present tense is divided into simple present present continuous present perfect in present perfect continuous tense and past tense is divided again into four which is simple past past continuous past perfect and past perfect continuous and the last one that's future tense it's divided into simple future future continuous future perfect and the last one which is future perfect continuous is presently no more in use because of the changing uh, situations of English grammar presently people are no more using this particular tense so we are not going to discuss this so all together we are going to look into all these 11 types of tenses all together there are 12 tenses but uh, minus the one we have just talked which is this one future perfect continuous this future perfect continuous will not be in use so we are not going to discuss this so 1 minus out of 12 we are going to discuss on 11 different tenses so we are going to look at uh, how a particular tense is relevant or its uses in which different ways we are going to use a particular tense okay so let's move on uh, to save my time I have already prepared this on my copy so let's see first of all present tense and in present tense we'll see simple present tense now in simple present tense the first thing uh, that we are going to look at is within this simple present tense that means how simple present tense is going to act or uh, what are the different references, different actions that can be used in a, a simple present tense? So, point number A, this one, habitual action or regular action. So, habitual action means the actions that we regularly do, like we sleep, we eat food, we take bath. Okay, these are different activities that we regularly do, which is a kind of habit uh, for all of us so first thing is habitual action or regular action so in this uh, the first thing we we'll look at is example I go to school every day so this is a word indication you can see every day uh, every regularly okay usually uh, there are some words like that if you look up your grammar book you may find those things okay so will not talk much about word indications uh, 
let's see i go to school every day now every day is the indication which you do regularly and that's why our verb is in a simple present form look at this i go to school every day now we have to look at this uh, persons you know first person second person and third person that grammar uh, expresses so in this expression uh, with first person i and we we do not use s or es form of verb so the verb is in a base form okay so i go to school every day so the next thing here next example i have put he takes bath every morning he takes bath every morning takes is our verb here and you look at this is third person singular when it is third person singular our verb is going to have s or es form so that's how it is all right with the first person we don't use with the third person singular not plural okay with plural we don't use s and es form of verb but with third person singular we use s or es form of verb so this take word is written in the form you can see here which is takes all right he takes bath every morning now let's move on to the next point within simple present tense this is number b universal truth universal truth or i can use another word which is permanent action okay permanent action permanent action means the action that never changes it remains same now look at this example honey is sweet if you write honey was sweet the structure of the sentence is not wrong but the implication of the sweetness of honey will be wrong if you say honey was sweet structure of the sentence is correct but the meaning of the sentence will be in jeopardy why the reason is look at this honey was sweet will mean that honey used to be sweet earlier but today honey is not sweet it may be of different flavor you can say sour salty whatever but it is not correct so this is not possible so that's why this is the verb is or be verb means the state of being the state of being present all the time okay this is what it means so honey is with this is how we express it's not going to change its expression never okay then the art is round when we say by mistake the art was round it is correct the sentence structure is correct but the meaning will be wrong because the art has been round since its beginning and today also it's round it's going to remain round all the time if you said the art was round some time back the art was round today the art is not round it may be flat or some other way you can say okay so this is also not possible that's why we have to use it in the present form present form and that is simple present tense or present indefinite tense the other name for simple present tense is present indefinite okay so the art is round this is universal truth throughout the earth this same thing happens honey is sweet throughout the earth honey is sweet honey is sweet in india honey is sweet in america honey is sweet in australia have you ever heard honey being being sour or salty in some other countries no never so the last thing we'll see here is the sun rises in the east so have you ever heard the sun rising in the west no not possible let's look at the structure the sun is third person singular so the word rise will have s with it which is rises so the sun rises in the east this is how 
we are going to express this because the sun always rises in the east okay so this phenomenon happens regularly and it is universal truth it is permanent action this action of rising sun in the east never changes okay now moving on to the third point in simple present let's see when the time of action in future is indicated by the context now look at it the time of action is actually future the time of action is actually future but we are going to write the sentence in simple present tense because we have indicated time context okay see time of action is indicated clear so when the time of action is indicated then the future tense can also be written in simple present tense form look at this he comes here on next monday okay now look at the other example he returns from delhi next week so next week is our indicated time near future indicated time in the sentence that's why the verb here, which could have been, uh, he will return from Delhi next week, is written in this form. He returns from Delhi next week. The same can also be written in simple future tense. This one also. And the both of them can also be written in present continuous form. Okay. So this kind of actions, although future if the time of action is indicated then simple present tense simple future tense and present continuous tense these three tenses can be used uh, to to write this kind of uh, sentences okay all right now next thing is present action any present action which may be present continuous naturally anything that is going on and in the midst of that you can say simple present tense it rains actually it is raining but you can say it rains somebody is walking you can say he walks okay so this is how the actions are uh, divided different actions different indications of actions can be can be used in simple present tense now the last point uh, to talk about in simple present tense uh, that is quotation from books and authors now when we are talking about quotations from books and authors the introductory clues okay the introductory clues look at this John Keats says this is the introductory clues and after that you can see the quotation quotation marks we have nothing to do with this quotation okay what is important is John Keats says this is third person singular one name person's name and then you can see this word says we are not going to use it in the past tense form we're going to use it in simple present tense form because uh, the person may be dead but you know his book his his poem is is uh, still with us okay so that's why we're going to use it in simple present form. So it is a quotation from one of John Keats poems called Endymion. So a thing of beauty is joy forever. This is a quotation. It's a line written by John Keats. And so as we quote this line, we're going to use the present tense form in this verb. Okay. In the introductory clues. All right. Another example, let's see here. APJ Abdul Kalam says, here also we are going to use says. Abdul Kalam is no more, but whatever he has written in his books, the books are still among us. That's why APJ Abdul Kalam says, you have to dream before your dreams can come true. This is what he said or whatever he uh, has written. Now, we don't have anything to do here we don't have to uh, change anything 
in this quotation whatever is there under inverted commas okay whatever is there under inverted commas we don't change anything but look at this verb the introductory clues this introductory clues must have the reporting verb here must be simple present tense all right so this is all about simple present tense now we are going to quickly move forward to uh, present continuous tense all right now present continuous tense uh, you can see I have already put the examples here so first thing in present continuous tense is uh, let's see the point an action going on at present any action that is going on at present can be used in present continuous okay so examples are here they are playing so they is plural so with plural the auxiliary verb is going to be are okay they are playing ing form is used with uh, present continuous tense so this is the structure of present continuous tense be verb main verb and ing form okay next thing I am reading a book so here also auxiliary verb which is also be verb here R M same thing but with different persons we are going to use different auxiliary verbs okay different be verbs so I am reading a book third point she is singing a song so this is the structure of uh, present continuous tense all right now moving on to the next point number B let's see when the time of future action is indicated by the context of the sentence we have just talked about it in in uh, simple present tense so same thing applies here also my father is returning from Delhi next week in that in that part it was uh, he returns from Delhi next week so that was the sentence now this is my father is returning so returns now is turned into auxiliary verb return plus ing so this is now present continuous our time is already indicated in the sentence in the context that's why uh, this is uh, this sentence can be written in present continuous all right my father is returning from Delhi next week you can also use it in present uh, simple present my father returns from Delhi next week or simple future my father will return from Delhi next week like that so uh, three tenses can be used in this in this particular category of uh, indication of verb okay action of verb another example he is coming here on next Monday he is coming here on next Monday so uh, same as this example next Monday we have indicated time in the sentence so he is coming here on next Monday so the verb is ing form okay now next point moving on to present perfect let's see the first point is action just completed any action that is just completed a moment ago an action is completed then we have to write it in present perfect tense form okay example is here I have submitted the report just now just now I just submitted and came out so in that moment when I speak when I tell to somebody I'll say I have submitted the report just now another example he has arrived just now the person just arrived now only and so you will say he has arrived just now so structure of the sentence you see uh, have or has you will see in the sentence okay along with that you're going to see past participle form of verb v3 form of verb okay this is how it is all right so here also look I is first person and that's why with first person we are going to use have with third person singular we are going to use has with third person plural like the word they okay we are going to use have they have arrived just now you can 
use it like this also okay now the next point is uh, action done in a space of time not yet gone out fully a particular action has been going on particularly but the particular action is not yet completed that means a particular action started at this point of time and it came up to this point of time this is the time when the person is speaking this sentence or this sentence okay this time and future goes on so look at this this is a period of time a stretch of time from here to the time of speaking okay so he will say I have lived in Boingau for 20 years the person has not completed living in Boingau he is still living how long he is going to continue to live uh, there is no guarantee for that there is no no end of that no one knows but he will still go on living how long he will live there is no definite time for that okay so I have lived in Bongaigo for 20 years you can also use the sentence in uh, present perfect continuous like I have been living in Bongaigo for 20 years so both ways are correct okay he has been laborious since his boyhood now look at this laborious cannot be uh, used as a verb in the sentence so we have used past participle form of be verb in the sentence as perfect tense because in a perfect tense what you need is have or has with a past participle form that is v3 form of verb okay so here also this is be verb but with this be verb we are using v3 form been okay he has been laborious since his boyhood so since his boyhood now we have to see this word for and since in the sentence okay for is going to indicate a period of time okay period of time and since is going to indicate a beginning point of time in the past okay beginning point of time in the past so that's how look at this if I say since look at the sentence since his boyhood his boyhood this is this beginning point of time okay his boyhood but when I say 20 years now let's see from here to here it is 20 years all right this is how it is so now his boyhood is this this point of time since is used beginning point of time in the past and for for is used with a period of time 20 years look starting from here to here is a 20 years period of time all right so this is how it is all right I hope you have understood it so I have lived in Boyago for 20 years he has been laborious since his boyhood all right let's move on to the next point okay now the third point a past action the result of which still continues okay in this in this particular case let's see it's it's a past action look at the instruction okay a past action the result of which still continues you have done one past action long time ago 10 years back 20 years back whatever that particular single act in the past okay has an influence at present also look at this he has been studious he has been studious the person studied hard long time ago in the past presently he doesn't study anymore but his his hard work in his studies today his life is shining and he is enjoying so this past action that he had done long time ago has an influence today as he is enjoying his life the next sentence also you see I have done wrong long time ago maybe 10 years back I committed a mistake that was only one mistake a single act long time ago but because of that mistake because of that particular wrong 
that I did, today I am suffering. In this case, the person is enjoying, today I am suffering. So that past action has influenced today also because I feel today also. I regret because of that action done today also. That's why with that reference of the past connecting to the present, look, he has been studious. Present perfect tense is used. I have done wrong. Present perfect tense is used. Okay? Moving on to the next point, the fourth point. To express a future perfect when preceded by these words after, before, when, as soon as. Okay, example, let's see. I shall go to play as soon as I have finished the homework. So, you will see one side of the sentence is in simple future, but the other part, you can see it is in present perfect, have finished. Okay, present perfect tense. So, uh, you can see these words in the sentence. These words after, before, when, as soon as is preceding present perfect tense. You can see these words before present perfect tense. Okay, see as soon as and then comes present perfect tense. So, this is how it is to express future perfect. Another example, she will meet her friend after she has completed her project. After precedes our present perfect tense. After comes first in the sentence, then this comes. Okay, so this is how it is. In this case, just like this one, here also simple future. This is how present perfect tense is being used with different uh, ideas, different indications, all right? Now the last thing in present tense, which is present perfect continuous tense. Uh, first, let's see. To express an action that has been going on for some time now and is not yet finished. The action has been going on until now for some time. But it is not yet finished. Okay. See the example. He has been living here for six years. He has been living here for six years. So I have already discussed about how how uh, for or since is used in the sentence. Okay. He has been living here for as the period of time. He has been living here for six years. In our example, he has been teaching here since 2000. He has been teaching here since 2000. 2000 is the beginning point in the past. Till now, going on, maybe, in future. No idea, but it is sure the sentence is indicating us that the action will go on again in future also. That's how it is, okay? For six years, starting from here to here, it's a six years period. Okay? That's how it is. This is 2000, beginning point of time in the past until now. So, this is how uh, present perfect continuous is used in the sentence. Alright? Now, let's move on to past tense. Past tense. Uh, First point, let's see simple past tense. So, point number one, there are various ways to express simple past tense. So, number one, number A, let's see. A single act in the past. Only one act, okay? Only one action, single act in the past. He did the work. We visited the zoo last year. I had my lunch an hour ago. Now these are word indications as you see last year, an hour ago, last week, last month, okay, a minute ago, a year ago. So these are some word indications that will surely make your sentence simple past tense. Alright? So this is how it is, single act in the past. Alright? Next thing, 
habitual action in the past. Uh, suppose in the past also there can be habitual actions. The actions that you used to do but now you don't do those actions anymore. Okay, so that kind. Now you see I studied hard. Today you don't study anymore. Long time ago you studied hard when you were going to school. So I studied hard. All right. We attended dance class. See, today you are no more attending dance classes. Earlier you used to regularly go for dance classes. So in that case you will say we attended dance class. Another example, let's see, I went to school. You can say I went to school yesterday. Now yesterday will specifically mean only one action which is yesterday. And that's why it is simple past tense, of course, but that is single act in the past. In this category it comes. If I say I went to school yesterday by adding the word yesterday here, it means to say single act in the past. But if I say I went to school, avoiding yesterday in this sentence, I went to school, it would mean that I used to go to school. How long you went to school? Starting with your nursery classes, maybe you were going to school up to class 12. Okay, probably, say. For example, I'm saying, you might be going to college after that, let it be. But if I say I went to school, it means right starting from the day one I went to school till I completed my class 12. That means I went to school. That's, you know, habitual action in the past. Okay, so this means habitual action in the past. If you add yesterday here in the sentence, then it will mean single act in the past. Okay, so for example, let me write it here. Uh, I went to school yesterday. So yesterday is an indication, word indication, which means simple past tense. Okay, so this part and this part is same, nothing is different. But the meaning of this sentence, the indication of the action of this sentence and this particular sentence is completely different. This means single act in the past. This means habitual action in the past. All right. Moving on to next point. The next point is number C, action actually going on in the past. We are going to talk about action actually going on in the past. See here. While they danced, we sang. That means two actions were hand in hand at the same spot, connected very much to each other, uh, going on. Look at this. While they danced, we sang. So it actually came from a past continuous, two past continuous sentences. While they were dancing, we were singing. From there, we can write, while they danced, we sang. So, the dancers in the same spot, the dancers are uh, dancing to the song that these people are singing. Okay. And these people are singing to help them dance. That's how it is. Okay. So, two things are going on at the same time here two actions so while they danced we sang the next sentence you can see we cheered while they played this this particular part can be in the beginning or at the end wherever you place it's it's fine so here I'm starting with uh, conjunction while but I'm keeping conjunction while here in the middle of the sentence okay look at this clear we cheered while they played so it's like we were cheering while they were playing. At the game of these people who are playing, we are cheering. So that's how two actions connected to each other were going on in the past. That's how we write it in the simple past tense form. We cheered while they played. All right. Now moving on to number D, polite form of address. 
So when you are making polite address to somebody, requesting, asking, then then you're going to use the past tense form, okay? So could is not true past tense, but it is conditional past. Could you please lend me your dictionary? So could is used. In the next sentence, you see, would you please post the letter for me? So you are making a request in the form of interrogative sentence this is not true interrogative sentence at the same time it is a request sentence okay so this is how it is could or would is used for a polite address to somebody all right now moving on to next point point number e let's see uh, it is used with as if as though i wish and similar other expressions uh, to express an unreal past. Look at this, unreal past. The past tense situation here is not real. It is not true past tense situation, okay? It's just just uh, improbable wish, the wish that cannot be fulfilled, or it is just a supposition, all right? So an improbable wish or a mere supposition, all right? So let's see the examples. First of all, with this I wish, you can see here I wish. With this expression I wish, you are going to use simple past tense. Okay, I were the prime minister. This is improbable. Why Why are we not using was in this case? Because with singular, uh, we are going to actually use was. But here, we are not going to use was. Instead, we use uh, where. Where, in order to indicate that something that you are wishing is not fulfillable it cannot be fulfilled it cannot happen in true sense okay so that's why i wish i were the prime minister we're not going to use was in this case next another sentence with wish i wish i had the wings of a bird now this is not past perfect this is simple past tense because this head is not not helping any other verb form in the sentence so it is a principal verb here auxiliary verb although but it is principal verb in this case it's not working as auxiliary verb because it has nothing to help in the sentence auxiliary verb means helping verb all right so this is simple past tense i wish i had the wings of a bird i cannot have the wings of a bird i am a human being and so this wish is improbable it is just a wish that you wish can never be fulfilled all right now moving into the next example he behaved as though look at this we are using as though look at this as though he behaved as though he were mad so with he we use was just like this because this wish uh, can never be fulfilled the be verb form we are going to use is where all right it doesn't mean plural in this case it has a different indication different meaning right he behaved as though he were mad the person is actually not mad but he's showing he is pretending he is trying to be mad in front of others okay acting mad let's say like that okay that's how it is now next point he talks uh, he talks as if he knew everything. He talks as if he knew everything. As if is used. Look at this. As if is used. So, although this part may be present, look at this. This becomes past tense. Because, you see, he talks as if he knew everything. As if is used. Now, this is just show off. The person doesn't know much, but his talks, his his way of talking to others sounded like he knew so many things. He knew everything, but it is not true. Okay? So that is not true. So knowing everything is not true for that person, for this person. And that is why with as if being used as mere supposition, uh Simple past tense is used in the sentence, all right? He talks as if he knew everything. This is our simple past tense. This is our simple past tense. Our simple past tense. Our simple past tense. Okay? Moving on to the next. 
So number F, let's see. It is used after the expression, it is time. Now, whenever you see this expression, it is time in the sentence, right after that, whatever comes here, okay? This is going to be your simple past tense. Look at this example. It is time we went home. We went home. Simple past tense. We went home. Next example. It is time we started for school. We started. Simple past tense. It is high time. High may sometimes come in between. Okay. It doesn't matter. But you have the sentence like this. It is time. High may sometimes come in between for for uh, the expression. So it is time. It is high time we studied hard. It is high time we studied hard. So this is our simple past tense expression. All right. Then the last point that we are going to look at in simple past tense is. Uh, Simple past tense is a huge, huge topic, okay? Whatever, let's see the last point now. A single act in the midst of an ongoing action. A particular action is going on, okay? A particular action is going on. When the particular action is going on, a particular action happens in between, okay? Which is related to this, which is connected to this. So that expression is given in the form of simple past tense okay look at this present uh, past continuous tense he was reading a book he was reading a book when I saw him this is our simple past tense so a particular action is going on going on in between this particular action happens look at this one okay we were walking in the garden when the tree fell fell simple past tense the tree fell okay so this is how simple past tense is being expressed in the midst of past continuous tense you have simple past tense all right this is how it is okay so this is the end of past tense so now let's move on to the next point in past tense past continuous tense Okay, past continuous tense is a very small topic. Uh, you can see on screen. Any action going on in the past. Any action that's going on in the past. Okay, suppose if this is present. Alright, whatever is going, whatever was going on in between this. So this is your uh, past continuous tense. Look at the examples. It was raining. She was reading. They were playing in the field. So it's pretty simple, all right? Only thing is, uh, with the subject being singular or plural, first person, second person, third person, you, ha you have to look at it. The auxiliary verb, which is be verb here also, you're going to see was with singular, was with singular, okay? And were with plural, all right? So this is the thing. You have to look at and uh, the verb is like present continuous you can see ing form with the main verb ing form is used all right this is the structure okay now let's move on to another tense okay now moving on to past perfect tense let's look at this number first point an action done before another past action that means we have two actions in the past. If this is the timeline, um, this is action. Let's write action one. Let's write action two. Okay. Action one is past perfect tense. Action two is simple past tense. So, you have to remember this this few few things uh, another you have a particular thing in uh, let's let's look let me write it here there's a secret po formula you have um, before before 
after after okay so uh, the use of after and before in the sentence how it indicates uh, where past perfect tense is going to sit in the sentence all right so let's see an action done before another past action we have already one action another action happens okay so what the instruction says an action done before another past action an action done before another past action this action is done before and this action is done after so that means our past perfect tense is this one and this is our simple past tense so look at the example here he did not know when I had returned home he did not know simple past tense when I had returned home returning home is this one first of all the person returned home later the person did not know about his coming okay this did not know about the coming of this person so this is later this is first that's why first action is kept in past perfect continuous I had returned home right next example let's see the train had left before I reached the station now let's see I have been talking about before before after after this is this is a formula you need to remember okay the train had left before I reached the station I have always told you that there are two actions action two is simple past tense action one is past perfect tense okay so let's let's look at this sentence before is used in the sentence I reached the station when it is before look before before your past perfect tense is going to sit before this word this is before this word before and where is your past perfect tense here this side okay so before before that means before word is there in the sentence then this part is your past perfect tense the train had left before I reached the station this is second part second part is your simple past tense all right this is your past perfect tense and this is your simple past tense all right next the match started after I had reached the stadium look at this after is used what is it after after when you see the word after in the sentence this part okay after 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 you're going to have past perfect tense after the word after this is the word after and after this word only you're going to have your past perfect tense I had reached the station so now look at the structure the structure is had always it doesn't matter what person uh, gender singularity plurality doesn't matter so it's always going to be had okay had here also had here also had here also wherever it is you're going to find this word had which means past and perfect and along with this v3 form of verb you are going to see returned and here also left v3 form and here also reached v3 form okay so had reached had left had returned this is how it is all right i hope you have understood this let's move on to the next point uh, now the next point here number B it is used after if I wish to express past unreal activity so it's about unreal activity okay if and I wish is used with unreal activity so the action whatever we can see here is not the real past tense action it has not happened okay it's just supposition or or wish so you see the example here if you had invited me I would have attended the birthday party so if you had invited me 
if is used in a sentence okay if is used in a sentence and then you see had invited is our past perfect tense so if you had invited me that means the person did not invite invitation was not given okay that's it so that's why the person also could not attend the party this is it all right but it is already passed the situation did not take place now you see next point next example i wish i had invited my friend the person did not invite the friend look at this had invited here also similar thing and because we are using if here you see past perfect used because we are using i wish here past perfect is being used i wish is used here so i had helped past perfect tense is being used so this is how it is and this is the past perfect tense okay the next tense that is past perfect continuous in the past perfect continuous it's a very simple thing an action that was going on before another past action we have an action which was going on before now another past action this is past already okay one past action happens this one past all right whatever happens up to this from a certain point of time to this is past perfect continuous okay let's see the example he had been working in the factory before he fell ill this is the time when he fell ill this is the period of time when the person had been working had been working that's why it is past perfect all right next point you see the police had been watching his movement till they arrested him had been watching his movement the whole time starting from this point to this point the police had been watching the person and this is the point of time when they arrested the person okay when they arrested him so that's how it is past perfect continuous starting from here to here this is a continuous process all right so this is a period of time at the same time so past perfect continuous third example we had been playing football before it rained this is the point of time when it rained this point from here to here until the time the the uh, rain came they had been playing football so we had been playing football so the whole time they had been playing football until this time when it rained okay so this is uh, past perfect continuous and with this uh, our past perfect continuous ends now we're moving on to future tense all right future tense is pretty simple and and it's a small topic not a big one so future let's say simple future tense first point any action that will take place in future any action that will take place in future all right let's say he will be 40 tomorrow tomorrow the person is going to turn 40 he will become 40 years so uh, you can write it in simple present tense also he turns 40 tomorrow or he is turning 40 tomorrow in present continuous form like that uh, because time is already given in the sentence all right so for now because we are doing simple future tense we'll see only simple future here he will be 40 tomorrow we shall start early in the morning the structure will be this is present form be verb start present form okay here also you'll see present form the verbs are in the base form but we have to use will or shall in the sentence that's it with third person we are going to use will with third person and second person with the first person we're going to use shall okay this is the general rule here in the next example we shall start early in the morning this is how shall start okay my father will return from delhi next week this example we have done in simple uh, present tense also in in present continuous tense also okay uh, as far as i remember my father will return from delhi next week this is how it can be written in simple future tense 
next he will come here on next Monday this example also we have done in uh, probably simple present tense he will come here on next Monday so now we are going to we are writing it in simple future tense form all right simple future tense is very easy any action that that will happen in future can be written in simple future tense moving on to the next tense future continuous this is also pretty simple see an action that will be going on in future an action that will be going on in future all right so any action that will happen in future but in a continuous process okay that's what it is i shall be reading a poem what you will see shall and be shall or will is used and then be will always be there in the sentence you'll see here be will always be there will or shall is used and then the verb is ing form that's how it is okay i shall be reading a book uh, i shall be reading a poem he will be playing football at this time tomorrow at this time tomorrow means exactly uh, the time now at present so suppose if it is 5 p.m. right now talking about tomorrow's 5 p.m. so that in that given time the person will be playing football okay I shall be sleeping at this time tomorrow suppose if it is um, some people like to have have a nap in the afternoon after having lunch some people like to have a short sleep okay so like half an hour one hour so like that so you can see sleeping is also a continuous process here you might be sleeping one hour one hour is a long long period of time you can say okay I shall be sleeping at this time tomorrow if it is one o'clock right now 1 p.m. tomorrow at this time means at this time tomorrow means tomorrow around 1 p.m. the person will be sleeping that's how it is so the structure of the sentence is subject shall or will you will see in the sentence and then be will always be there and then verb ing form this is your structure all right now moving on to the next tense and that will be the last i'm going to discuss and that is future perfect all right so number one let's see an action that will have been completed before a given time in future a specific given time you will see this is a given time okay this is a given time this is a given time okay so uh, before before it says before a given time there's a specific given time and before that you're going to complete a particular action so that's why you're going to use it in uh, you're going to use it in future perfect okay we shall have our examination uh, our exams completed so what you can say shall have completed shall have completed perfect tense that's why have you're going to see with we we're going to write shall with some other we are we're going to write like maybe we'll look at this the teacher will have taught the lesson before you come we shall have our exams completed by 30 May. This is the given time. Before this given time, you're going to have it completed. Okay. We shall have finished the project by next month. Next month is the given time. So before next month only, you're going to finish your project. So we shall have finished. Shall have finished. Shall or will. Have will always be there in perfect tense and then v3 form of verb that's the structure i shall have done my homework before my father returns my father returns is the point of time given time before which you are going to finish your homework shall have done okay the teacher will have taught the lesson before you come you your coming is the point of time before which you're going to finish your uh, maybe the teacher is going to finish the lesson so the teacher will have taught will have taught means will finish the lesson will finish the teaching all right so the teacher will have taught the lesson before you come so 
this is future perfect now uh, there is an alternative about this two two kind the modern use this kind of sentences are are, are hardly used these days so uh, i'm going to show you the alternate way of using this kind of future perfect sentences all right uh, here they are modern use of future perfect i have already shown you this sentence in in the last part I shall have done my homework before my father returns home. Now, this shall have done, our future perfect, can be replaced by simple future. Look at this. Simple future. I shall do my homework before my father returns home. Okay? So, this is how it is. When you see before in the sentence, you will see this side will be simple present. And this side will be simple future. That's how it is. All right. So this future perfect, this future perfect is replaced uh, with this shall do, which is simple future. See the next sentence also. The teacher will have taught the lesson before you come. This is your simple present. All right. And look at this word come. If it is came, the tense will change here. But it is come with you, second person. We don't use s or yes form of verb. So the only thing that you you will see the separation of the idea uh, here is come or came. Came means simple past tense, which means you are going to change this tense. But it is come, which is simple present. So this will have taught, which is future perfect, can be changed in. This way we'll teach simple future. All right, so simple future, simple present. This is how you have to match up. All right, so these are uh, the alternate use of uh, this kind of sentences. So uh, whenever it comes in the exam, you you may attempt this way, which is also correct. You may attempt this way, which is also correct. All right, so I hope you have understood and these are all the things that I have explained uh, separately, all the different areas, different uses, uh, 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 tense, different tenses have got. So uh, watch the video carefully, uh, try to understand and it will be all good for you. Uh, before I wind up the lesson, uh, it's a very important thing to update to you. Look at this. Present continuous cannot be used in all kinds of verbs. You can see the following verbs here. Verbs of senses, verbs of feeling and emotion, verbs of possession, verbs of appearing, verbs of thinking or mental activity. Okay, this kind of verbs cannot be simply used in... In present continuous tense okay look at this here present continuous tense cannot be ordinarily used in in present continuous tense you see on account of their meaning they cannot be used okay now see for an example uh, if you say I am seeing you it is incorrect you have to say I see you that means you have to use it in simple present tense you can you can use it uh, the ing form of verb of this see, seeing can be used in different way. Uh, in the case of non-finite verb like seeing me come, he ran away. So in this case, it's possible. So these are the similar things here you can find here also. You, ca you don't say uh, I am loving you. You say I love you. This is the right way to do that. Okay. And here also, you don't say, uh, it is belonging to me. You can't say like that. You, you say, it belongs to me. This is the right way. Okay. So here also, things you see. You don't say, I am knowing it. Uh, you say, I know it. Okay. This is the right way. Some examples are given here also. I am seeing. Incorrect. Uh, rose smells sweet. You cannot say the rose is smelling sweet. This is incorrect. All right. So these are the things you need to remember. 
So you should be very very careful uh, not to use all these verbs in a in a ordinary present continuous tense form. Okay. So this much for today. I hope you understood. And this is all about tense. I have explained all the different different uses, different uh, indications, okay, structures in this video. And uh, thank you for watching.